Hey guys. Good morning. We're doing this again because Jen accidentally hit start early. So if you got two notifications. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. But so we have a new theme for this month. We do. For August, we're going to be talking about batiks because I love batiks. They're wonderful fabrics and sometimes they scare people. Or they have a weird rap. Uh, repu- I don't they know. do have a weird reputation sometimes. Anyway. But I think there's a lot of misconceptions about them. Yes. And so what Jen and I want to talk about is what they are, what makes them different, why we like them. How, some how to use the, them, some of the tricks to working with them. And myths. Yeah. In the world of fabric when it comes to batiks. Yep. Sorry. And sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, it's been the morning apparently. So, fun fact. The word batik comes from the Java ling- Javanese language from Java. Is that what Java from like computer? That's where the language comes from. Java. And it's actually the Javanese word titik. And it means dot. And the reason is drawing with batiks are usually done, by usually I mean traditionally, done by hand drawing with a wet wax, a melted, melted wax. Um, they are really important in certain cultures. Like in certain cultures, babies are wrapped in batiks when they're born. Um, pregnant women are wrapped up in like seven different batiks um, and it's part of a ceremony. Uh, a lot of your traditional prints have a meaning to them. Um, they are ancient. They are ancient. They have been found in pyramids from 4000 BC, guys. This is an ancient Not technique. Not new. So they're awesome. Right now they're most common in Southern Asia, um, Indonesia is where you get a lot of them. Say Bali, Pakistan. Bali, we have some that come from Pakistan. Thailand. Thailand. Batiks are still done by hand. Um, commercially, they are made, I mean, they've always been done with what's called a wax resist process. What that means is they take their fabric, they draw or stamp with Usually wax. they use stamps. We use stamps because drawing takes it's still hands more time. Liz is going to post a video later. It's going to be awesome. You're yes. going to want to watch this. Good. But with the wax in place, then they dye it. And the wax prevents that spot from taking up that dye. And so it creates that resist area. And then they boil it to get the dye off. The wax off. The wax off. So you guys. And excess dye. This is a very traditional not the prints not traditional it's roses so it's not traditional but this is a classic batik style print it is a blender and i'm going to say blender because it uses one a lot color. of different colors shades of one color and how this would be done is your original fabric would have been dyed in kind of this mottled lighter red in here and then it would have been stamped with the wax. Guys, these stamps are like nine by nine inch square, so it's stamped. And then all they over. would have dyed it again to get this darker color around the roses. And, and then they boiled. would have boiled it to get the wax off and then rinsed it a few more times. And we end up with this fun batik. One way to differentiate batiks because sometimes we will get printed or digitally printed digitally fabric. Digitally printed fabric, I've seen a lot of, especially lately because digitals have become a lot more popular, that looks like batik. And they're made to imitate batik. They're less expensive to make. Because they're not hand dyed. <laughs> now, one way you know it's digitally printed and, or batik is, see, see how I don't have a selvage here? The design goes all the way to the edge. And there's not perforated dots. There's no perforated dots. You, it, it's because this doesn't have to get run through a machine. It doesn't get screen printed. And so we don't have to have that selvage. So the, the dye is all the way to the edge. All the, every now and then you'll see that the pattern ends a little inside. That's just because of how it was stamped. That being said, this selvage is such that you can use all of it. It's not like other things where I say selvage is not fabric because um, this selvage Sorry. is the same. And so this is one way you can always tell a batik from something that's printed to look like a batik. A batik is not going to have your traditional selvage. Your traditional selvage. Okay, so this is the most common style of batiks, traditional, traditional style. One thing about batik fabrics that's fun to know is they feel a little different, yeah. right? And it's because to stand up to this really 
intense process. It is intense. It's done with a tighter weave and, and a higher thread count. Boiled to death, and so it's been shrunken. Right, it's so it's pre-shrunk. Pre-shrunk. We've, we've done the shrinking. Your batiks aren't going to shrink the same way that your cottons are. But um, because of that tighter weave and that higher thread count, they, they have a slightly different feel. But they're still 100% cotton. 100% cotton and silk are really the only two fabrics that really take the batik process well. And so you'll know if it's silk. You'll know if it's silk. Because it won't feel like cotton. And it will cost more. <laughs> will cost a significant <laughs> amount more than a cotton batik. <laughs> anyway, so this is one type of batik. We're going to show you a couple others real quick. So another fun thing I want to show you is these two are less than traditional are prints. Are less than traditional prints. These were actually designed by one of our fabric reps who works for Hoffman. And um, it's so easy to design your own batik because you know what you do? You design a stamp and then they just make it. <laughs> Yeah, she gets them to make them for her. It's awesome. So this one's less than traditional. We have vintage trucks right. on this print. And then um, she did some Western themed ones. Wildlife. So this one has bears on it. I used it in this quilt right here. So I have bears and moose and tusked animals and, and wolves wolf. and uh, bison. Paw, paw tracks. tracks. And this is a wood grain batik that she did. So definitely less than traditional prints on the market. Um, we also have stripes, stripes, which are less than perfect because guess what? They're hand stamped. If I look really close right here, I can here, see the stamp line. I can see where the stamp didn't quite meet up perfectly. But that's because they're made by hand. And they're awesome. Um, now, the most simple batik out there is a color wash batik. It looks like watercolors. Yep. And it's been dyed just the one time. There's no wax. There was no wax. Right. Um, these are really gorgeous blenders. They are actually called watercolors, but and they're beautiful batiks. One thing we love about the batiks is because the dye goes all the way through, the colors are very saturated. They're very rich, more so than what you're going to get on your traditional printed cotton yes. fabric. It doesn't matter how much they print that these colors always feel more saturated because they are. They literally totally are. It They're goes all the way through. It's not white on the back. So that said, is there a right or a wrong side to a batik? No. So here's the deal. Because of the way they're stamped, the wax goes all the way through. It doesn't sit on one side. So the design goes all the way through. Now, when you look closely at a batik, you might notice that on one side, the line is a little fuzzy, and on the other side, it's clear. Uh, you know, it's a cleaner line. Maybe that's the right side for you. Maybe on one side, the, you know, the color's a little more vibrant, and it's less vibrant on the other side. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the right side for you. You get to pick what the right side and the wrong side are on batiks, but except in one case. There is no right or wrong side. But like I said, when I made this quilt, I'm just going to, sorry, interrupt you for a sec. There were a couple of the prints where one side was definitely brighter. Yep. And so in those cases, I paid attention, mm -hmm. but otherwise, no big deal. By the way, this one's foundation paper piecing, and foundation paper piecing with batiks is awesome. Awesome. Because you don't have to worry that you put it on the wrong, <laughs> wrong direction. Right. Um, we, right. we love our, our batiks for that. But really, the right side is, is whichever one you like best. So don't spend a lot of time obsessing over it. Those, I, I kind of decide piece by piece. Um, there are rare exceptions. So this one in this bundle has a metallic screen printing that got put on after the batiking process. Every now and then you will find batiks that have some metallic printed on them. Or some other or printing. Or even some other screen printing. Sometimes we add details to batiks by screen printing Afterwards. after that process. In that case, you're going to see a right side. Now, if you don't like the metallic on this one, use the other just side. Use the other side. Then you don't have to have the metallic. Fun fact. Um, so this one... This is a new one. We have a new line of these in the shop. Uh, this is a really interesting batiking process. Yes. And Liz is going to post a video with some of this information later because it's multiple wax layers. Yes. So this has had multiple layers so that you don't have all the different saturation layers. You have layers have, that have only been saturated by single colors instead of the piling. So it's like screen printing with multiple colors, but, but in a pool but with, with dye and wax. So 
they're really cool. You don't usually see batiks with such uh, separation of color. Yeah, that's quite unusual, actually. But they're really cool. We have a they, kit uh, that uses it. This we call it's our Morse code quilt kit. Well, we have another one coming, and it as um, soon as I cut them. Yes, there's another one. I even have a sample for it, so I'll have to show it to you. Yep. So, it's but it just uses these prints nice gorgeous. and Gorgeous. Um, we do have a lot of batik kits in the shop. Uh, this quilt is hanging up in the shop. It's called Night Sky. It was made to for be Kona's. for Kona solids. Uh, I decided, why not? Batiks are so saturated. We went with batiks, and I absolutely love it. It's hanging up in the shop right now. This one and though, probably will be forever. Good example because we use batiks for the stars, and then we use a regular quilting cotton for the black background. We did. And that's totally fine. What's going to happen is that cotton is going to shrink a little bit. A that being bit. said, a 3% shrink rate isn't going to be a big deal. No. So, Good luck noticing. If it does really matter to you, feel free your to cotton. wash the black, but you don't need to wash the batiks. One other thing we love about working with batiks is because they have a tighter weave yes. and a higher thread count, they don't fray hardly at all. Which Definitely makes doing like fusible applique, foundation piecing, and curves so much easier because it, it, it doesn't fray. It yeah, looks you nice. Can, and it doesn't stretch long as term. Much. It doesn't stretch. It doesn't misshape. And that's one reason I really like it with curves is even with pressing it, it's hard to deform it. Well, and that's like with the pineapple or a log cabin or something like that where you're going to have long skinny strips. It's great for that too because it's not going to stretch as much as regular fabric is. Also, another reason you love it for curves and foundation paper piecing is it presses so flat. So flat. So because it is, you know, it, it is thinner. That, now, I'm, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's nice it's, and tight yeah. and thin. And then the heat, it re responds to heat well. It does respond to heat well. I don't know why exactly. She probably Maybe does. it's been boiled 7,000 times. That's probably why. Um, anyway. So there are a couple things that are going to make working with batiks a whole lot easier. Step number one, you want a fine, sharp needle. Usually when we're sewing, we're going between the weave. And that's why our slightly rounded needles so we work great. Universal. Right. universal needle. Because we're usually stitching our needles going between that weave. It's not actually poking holes. With batiks, we're actually poking holes. And because of that, we want the needle to be fine, so our holes are small, and sharp. I don't know if, if you've ever sewn with batiks, you've probably heard it go clink, 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 It clink, sounds clink. different. Um, we know when we're working with batiks on the long arm from across the shop because I can hear every stitch. And that's fine. It, it just is what it is. It's, but that means a batik quilt when we're long arming. I have to know it's a batik because absolutely if it was a fresh needle a when we start. Quilting cotton, there's something wrong with the machine if I'd it be sounds worried. that way. But if it's so, a batik, that's how they sound. We want a sharp, fine needle. I prefer the 7010 Microtex. Microtex Sharps. are sharp. Um, another thing that's nice is to make sure your thread is fairly fine. So we don't want to use anything thick, rough, rough, or chunky when we're piecing. Um, I wouldn't go with anything heavier than an 80, a 50 weight thread. So like my Orifil 50 works well. Uh, um, Deco Bob 80 would a Deco be better. Deco Bob 80 is better. That's what I use primarily when I foundation paper piece. But it's really nice with batiks because it is a fine thread. And where this is a thin fabric, we want to use something that's in that same family that's also and thin and fine. Take up bulk. It, it suits the weave of the fabric. It does. Um, and like Liz said, the fabric has already been shrunk, so you don't need to pre-shrink it. And it's been boiled to death. And it's been boiled to death. So one of the things we hear a lot about people's concern with batiks is that it bleeds. Liz, do our batiks bleed? No. You guys, I'm not kidding. Every time from the people we buy batiks from, I un unwrap a bolt of batiks, there's a little paper insert that says, you do not need to pre-wash this product in each bolt every single bolt and that's because it has been boiled you guys your cold water is not going to release more dye than the boiling process did um also in the last rinse they use what's called a fixative yes which um makes the dye stable and holds it in place 
So I can't say that for every brand of batik ever made because I know some bleed. Um, mine don't. The ones we use, they all use a fixative. If you are concerned and you like the feel of pre-washed fabric, which I totally understand, um, feel free. You can use some retain when you wash it. That's another fixative. Retain. It's similar to the fixative that they use. I mean, and it's not a bad product. I mean, retain is actually, it's been on the market forever. It's about $3.99 for a bottle. Still do. Um, I don't even know how many loads. Lots. Plenty. It's a great product. So if you are concerned about batiks bleeding and you don't want to take my word for it, which is I'm fine. not offended. Um, retain is an awesome product. Pre-wash with retain, but I'm going to tell um, you, quality batiks do not require pre-washing, and they should not bleed. And well, and honestly, actually, if you're worried about it, you can uh, spot test. Yes, there's always that option. And on top of that, you guys don't wash your quilts on hot anyway. Please don't. Please. Um, <laughs> I did have somebody tell me once, she's like, it did still bleed. I mean, I boiled it and it bled. And I'm like, why are you boiling why are your you fabric? Why are you boiling your fabric? So, you guys, if you want to preserve the life of your quilt, <laughs> please don't wash it on Wash hot. on cold, air dry for the most part. That's um, just proper my quilt care. My favorite product on the planet is called, they're called color catchers. And if I throw them in with my quilts, they come out clean. They almost always come out clean. If I throw them in with my kids' new clothes, they don't. Because they came from Walmart and Target and they didn't use color fast dyes. You know why? It's more expensive. I know, which is why they don't use them. So if you buy jeans that turn your pants, your legs blue, it's because they didn't use color fast dye. Right. And you don't buy those kind of jeans that, you know, loft. Those don't turn your no. legs blue. No. If I go buy jeans at Nordstrom, they have never turned my legs blue. If I buy yeah. them at Walmart, they do. Oh, oh, yeah. And it's all about the dye. And, and there's nothing wrong with any of the price points. It's just knowing what you're paying for. And... Um, Quality, these kind of products don't bleed. Yep, so they're good stuff. Anyway, so I hope you guys learned something. I am going to try and post a video later today of the actual batik ink process so it's you can see fascinating. it. It's fascinating. Like, it's very you, you cool. might get stuck in like a YouTube like vortex, vortex of, of like batik videos, videos because they're addicting to watch. It's fascinating to watch the whole process. It really is, and it's fun. Anyway, so we're going to have more boutique projects and themes throughout the month, and we'll see y'all. Well, Jen will see you next week because I'll be gone. Oh, great. <laughs> She's excited. I okay. forgot. All right. <laughs> see Bye. Ya. Bye. What am I doing next week? I don't know. I just remembered on my way over here that I wasn't going to be here. Awesome. Um, I will do it for my home. There you go. So, Aiden, you don't have to come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we all have information.